How long do you really need to spend in the gym to reap all the benefits of resistance training and build muscles in the gym? Most of us are busy professionals working 40 hours a week or even more, and with latest research stating clearly that resistance training is required for optimal health and longevity, how can you fit in working out in a hectic work and life schedule? In this video, I want to explore the current science literature on what is the minimum effective dose you really need to build muscles and for the health benefits it provides. Before we start diving into how long and what you should be doing in the gym, let's explore the latest findings from this huge systematic review and meta-analysis of over 200,000 people done in 2021. Seven studies with more than 42,000 people concluded that muscle strengthening activities were associated with 15% lower risk of all-cause mortality. 15%, that's a huge number. And it gets better though. Three more studies concluded that the joint benefits of resistance training on cardio in more than 500,000 participants concluded that combining the two was associated with 40% lower risk of all-cause mortality. Even though that the meta-analysis states that the overall quality of the evidence is very low, these are insanely impressive numbers. And even if there is only maybe a correlation here, not a direct causation, this is still a good bulk of evidence that resistance training and doing cardio combined is really beneficial. And this is not only for all-cause mortality, this is also for cancer, for diabetes. There are really strong evidence that doing resistance training and cardio decreases these diseases by up to 20%. So how long and what kind of weightlifting you should be doing to get all these benefits? Just 30 to 60 minutes per week. That can be done in one of your lunch breaks or any time that you're free. For someone like me with a busy job and a busy lifestyle, it's great news. Now, yes, I do bodybuilding as a hobby, so I naturally I train longer, but this is just a choice. At the end of the day, if you want the benefits, you can just do 30 to 60 minutes per week, but you still need to do your cardio. And it's better to combine both for all the benefits. And building muscle doesn't really need you to go to the gym six times a week and dedicating your whole life to it, as YouTube and Instagram and social media in general is leading people to believe. So how long should you really be training to build muscle? Now, this really depends on your mindset. There are two types of people, people who want to maximize their gains and people who want to do just barely enough to get the health benefits it provides. The current gym mindset right now is that the more you do, the more gains you get. But it's actually not the case. Not only that there's diminishing returns, as we will see later, but also doing the minimum doesn't really leave too much on the table. For example, if doing four sets per muscle group per week will give you 80% of the results, doing eight sets will not give you 160% of the results. It would actually give you 90% of the results or even less if these sets are not done close to failure. And this is demonstrated here in this meta-analysis where they analyzed 15 studies, found out that on average doing 10 sets per week per muscle group yielded the maximum results, but doing five or less didn't give you 50% of the results, but almost 70% of the results. So yes, you can maximize your gains doing more, but doing less or doing the minimum will be enough for your given goals. Because at the end of the day, I believe not all of us want to be a 100 kg bodybuilder. Just one thing to keep in mind here is that these numbers are averages. So some people will get more, some people will get less. So for some practical advice here, if you have the time and you want to maximize your gains, then doing 10 sets per muscle group per week is the current science fitness community recommendation based on so many studies. But if you are pressed on time and you have a hectic lifestyle and you have a full-time job or you have kids or what have you, then doing five sets or even three sets per week is more than enough. And it will be enough for you to progress and see the health benefits coming from resistance training. Now, some people will tell me, but I don't want to spend two hours in a gym. Every time I go, I still spend two hours anyway. I will give practical advice here, but at first, I want to mention something. Almost 12 years ago, an article was published by Martin Birkin. I would recommend reading the whole thing. But I want to highlight a few things from this article that I see in, in all the gyms I go to until this day. One is the illusion of complexity. You don't really need the latest research on how to train to progress. I've seen this so many times, people doing some crazy TikTok exercises that doesn't benefit you in any way. It just looks fancy. So sticking to the basics is the best thing to do. Squats, bench press, deadlifts will continue to work until the end of time. You don't keep track. Getting muscles is quite a simple concept. Your body needs stimulus, AKA training to build muscles but you can't give the stimulus all at once. It has to be a weekly step-by-step -step process to sort of convince your body to build the muscles. 
If you don't keep track of what you're doing every week, you won't increase your loads the week after and you will be spinning your wheels and make no progress. This is really mind boggling to me. I don't really understand it. I've seen people going to the gym for years and they still look the same and they have the same strengths. They don't increase anything in any way. And I don't understand how is this motivating. And the only thing that impresses me is that they are still motivated to go to the gym even though they don't see any progress. Lastly, you are socializing too much. If you're pressed on time and you want to be in and out of the gym in 40 minutes in your lunch break, it wouldn't make sense to be socializing or be on Instagram for 30 minutes. You need to be efficient and actually do the work that will help you build muscles and progress. Talking, browsing social media isn't one of them. So enough ranting for now. So what are the practical things that you can do right now to make your workout more efficient and quick? First, cut the warm up. You don't really need 30 minutes of warming up. Warming up your specific muscle group that you're training that day is more than enough. Let's say you're doing squats, start with easy weight or even without a weight, do 20 reps, and then increase the weight and do more until you reach your working weight. Second, do more supersets. Doing supersets is best if done with two different muscle groups. For example, doing a bench press and a pull down while your chest is taking a break, you work your back. Or doing biceps and triceps. This can cut your workout time significantly. Third, do a drop set. Drop sets, again, are an amazing tool to cut time and increase the volume in your workouts. This can increase your volume without doing more sets. All you have to do is pick the weight you are doing this week and do a set to failure, then drop the weight 20 to 30%, then do another set to failure, then drop it again and do another set to failure. Just don't do this with compound lifts, especially squats, unless you have a death wish. Four, do rest pose sets. So this is similar to drop sets, but without dropping the weight. So you choose the number of reps you want to do, let's say 40 reps, then you do one set where you get as much as you can, then rest for 20 seconds, then do another and keep going until you finish your 40 reps. So this is a great tool that I personally use to cut my workout time. It's like doing four sets in one. One caveat to all of this is that you need to train close to failure. But since most of people don't know what failure really is, and based on these studies, we tend to underestimate failure by up to five reps, I have a recommendation here. You need to do everything super slowly. The centric part of the lift or the part where you feel the resistance should take you at least three seconds. Don't just drop the weight. I want you to feel it stretching, feel the tension, the muscles. Yes, it will hurt, but the more it hurts, the more gains and benefits you will get. And that's the mindset you wanna have going to the gym. When the muscle hurts, and not because you're doing bad form, but because the muscle is getting really worked and stretched out, that's where you will get all your gains. You know this famous quote, no pain, no gain? Unfortunately, it is correct. And that's what you really need to do in the gym to cut your workout really short because doing less sets means that these sets needs to be super efficient. One thing I wanna mention here is maintaining your muscles. Well, you will be relieved that maintaining muscles doesn't really need as much work as building it. This 2007 study suggests that training once or twice a week is sufficient to maintain your hard earned muscles, at least for the 12 weeks they tested this in. So you really don't have to keep going to the gym three, four times forever to maintain your muscles. After you've built the muscles you need for the health benefits or the look you're going for, you can shift focus on other things or hobbies while still reaping the health benefits that resistance training provides with only going to the gym once or twice a week. I will leave all the studies I mentioned in the description box below if you wanna check them out. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. And if you like the video, please like the video and subscribe for more videos. Thanks for watching.